the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. The world is talking this week about climate change in the wake of the report released by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel, report which makes clear that what it calls rapid and far-reaching measures are going to be needed from governments to limit dramatic climate impacts. But here in Nova Scotia, what we get instead is today a decision to use recycling money to subsidize Lafarge cement to burn tires. Now, the government can call this a, a green initiative until they turn green themselves, but the fact is that the project that increases emissions from quarrying and that releases toxins and that undermines uh, recycling is an environmentally regressive thing. Can the Premier point to any analysis that says that this tire burning project will reduce overall emissions for the province and not just the emissions at Lafarge? The Honourable Premier. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, if we reduce emissions at Lafarge, we would reduce them overall across the province, Mr. Speaker. That, they are part of the issue, part of our province, Mr. Speaker. Uh, but the, the reality of it is this process went through a permitting process. They have a pilot, Mr. Speaker, to move forward. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it uh, as uh, they continue to, Mr. Speaker, uh, to do a practice that not only is being done in other, it not, not only be done here in terms of how we divert tires, but it's being done in other Canadian provinces as well. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, the government is missing the mark by so many miles. This week, the United Nations report makes so clear the whole world has got to be near net zero emissions by 2050. We can't afford to be subsidizing toxic projects like tire burning. We need ambitious uh, reduction emissions targets and we need regulatory decisions to get us to those targets. Precisely a target of this sort has been placed before us in Nova Scotia with the 2030 declaration. So here's the question for the Premier. Will he commit to a target of reducing our emissions to 50 per cent below 1990 levels by 2030? The Honourable Premier. And Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Honourable Member of the question. This is one of those issues, Mr. Speaker, in our province that all three uh, political parties uh, can uh, take credit in working together as we uh, collectively over since uh, 2008, I believe it was, when uh, Minister Perrant brought it into the House. We all agreed. And even though successive times government has changed, parties have changed uh, who sits on this side of the House. We continue to move forward to ensure, uh, Mr. Speaker, that we continue down the road of reducing greenhouse gas in our province. The Honourable Member, Honourable Member would know that we are already at the 2030 targets that were set uh, by 2025. We will continue, we'll, we'll continue, Mr. Speaker, to make the investments and ensure that we continue to reduce uh, our, our greenhouse gases and continue to improve the environment that we live in, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. The, the Premier has, has said uh, earlier uh, that uh, the emissions reduction target in his cap-and-trade program will be in the area of 50 per cent below 2005 levels by 2030. I'll table his uh, comments to that effect. But this is a level that is not a bit lower than current projections for 2030 without there being any cap-and-trade program. So I want to ask the Premier, in what world is it now acceptable that the impact of cap-and-trade on projected emissions by 2030 will be zero? The Honourable Premier. Mr. Speaker, again, as I said in my uh, first answer, Mr. Speaker, through successive governments, we continue down the same path of reducing our greenhouse gas. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in the province, continuing to lead the country in that uh, endeavour. Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to do so, we'll continue to make changes. The issues that we're doing in and around ensuring that individuals reduce their own footprint by the housing grant programs that we have, uh, they continue to make those investments, continue to ensure that we green the power grid within this province. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, continuing to make sure that we have the capacity to grow the economy of this province and allow the fact that we can have economic growth at the same time that we're protecting the environment, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member wants to lead us down the path, Mr. Speaker, that does not involve a growing economy. We want to do both. 